Man with serious amnesia finally uncovers his true identity after 11 years. It could be argued that all we really are is a collection of memories. Your first kiss, the moment you finally mastered tying your shoes, and your favorite flavor of ice cream are a piece of the things that establish your identity. You're more than a social security number or the unflattering license photo in your pocket. Though uncommon, there are reported cases of disassociative amnesia. The condition results in a sufferer losing every memory about who they really are. Lost in the depths of their subconscious, they often never recover their true identity. Benjamin Kyle was one of those people, and his case is nothing short of astounding. Benjamin Kyle sat stiffly under the warm studio lights of the infamous Dr. Phil stage. As the mustachioed TV doc went on in his southern drawl, Kyle stared blankly. His posture was distinctly uncomfortable, and his suit looked too big for him. Kyle was out of place in front of the cameras. He was out of place almost everywhere he went, mostly because the man had no idea who he was. Not figuratively or in a philosophical sense. He wasn't trying to find himself in a yoga retreat way. He didn't know who he was and that he remembered nothing about his past, save for the date he was born. He didn't even know his real name, where he was from, or any members of his family. Even his earliest memory was disconcertingly recent. In the summer of 2004, an employee at a Burger King in Richmond Hill, Georgia, noticed a naked man laying down in front of the restaurant's dumpster. He had a bad sunburn, and his body was crawling with angry fire ants that left behind crimson bites on his skin. The police were called and the man was taken to the hospital to be evaluated. An incident was filed, citing the man as a vagrant. Despite his dire appearances, doctors confirmed the middle-aged white man was in good health. Good physical health, that is. With the exception of an advanced stage of cataracts in his eyes, he was physically able. His mind, however, was a very different story. The man wouldn't speak, refused food, and began to lash out at the doctors and nurses. The man accused them of being devils and demons. He then asked to see a priest and became even more agitated when he arrived, calling him an imposter. Based on the symptoms, he was diagnosed with catatonic schizophrenia. Following a dose of antipsychotics, he found himself at the psych ward. When they asked him questions about who he was or where he was from, he explained he didn't have a single clue. His memory offered only a fuzzy recall of very vague details. Although unsure, he thought he might be from Indianapolis. He thought he might have some brothers, but he didn't know their names or faces. He remembered buying a grilled cheese at the state fair for a quarter once. Other than that, he was a blank slate. The only thing he was sure of was his date of birth, August 29, 1948. That he knew for a fact. His condition was particularly odd because of how lucid and reasonable he appeared. His doctor suspected he might be faking amnesia. He'd been going by the name B.K. Doe, short for Burger King Doe, a reference to where he was found. Eventually, he decided he thought his real name might be Benjamin, with two A's. He chose Kyle as a surname. Thus, Benjamin Kyle was born. He was declared sane and transferred to a homeless shelter in Savannah, Georgia, where he lived and worked for years. He gained favor with some of the nurses who worked at the facility because he worked extremely hard. One nurse in particular, Catherine Slater, made it her mission to find out who this man really was. Interestingly, Kyle had become detached from the idea of ever discovering the truth. Instead, he buried himself in his maintenance work and sci-fi fantasy novels. Slater became obsessed. Even with the police, journalists, online sleuths, and the FBI on the case, no one ever acknowledged knowing who Kyle was. Millions of people viewed his picture on TV screens and internet posts, but not a single lead came out. One day, Slater received a call from Dr. Phil, and the pair flew out to Los Angeles, hoping their appearance on the hit show would reach someone, anyone from Kyle's past. He told his story in front of the wide-eyed audience. One particular detail struck a chord. Kyle had recently received cataract surgery with the help of a local charity, and he described the moment he got a good look at his face in the mirror. Where he expected to see a man in his 30s, he was greeted by a much older man. He explained he had no idea how he had gotten so old. The audience arguably sighed with empathy. Unfortunately, even the appearance on Dr. Phil didn't help him in his quest to discover his identity. Kyle became more and more discouraged. When genealogical detective Colleen Fitzpatrick came into Kyle's life, he was in a bad place. 
He'd left his job at the shelter because of a wage dispute. He was mowing lawns to get an income. Without a social security number, he could only work off the books. Kyle didn't exist in the eyes of the government, rendering him incapable of holding a job or receiving much-needed government assistance. Fitzpatrick thought she could help Kyle by analyzing his DNA in a different way. Using a 23andMe kit, Fitzpatrick cross-checked Kyle's DNA against a new pool of samples. The FBI had previously used their public database, but not the private one offered by the service. The results were extremely promising. Kyle shared characteristics with a family by the last name of Powell. Fitzpatrick began to reach out to the family to collect their DNA and sent pictures of Kyle to see if they recognized him. After years of searching, it seemed like the answer was around the corner. That's when Kyle left. He moved from Georgia, leaving everything he knew. He cut off contact with Slater and Fitzpatrick and began walking to Florida. A police officer gave him a ride to the state line and he found himself in Jacksonville. Kyle ended up working in a restaurant called Crazy Fish where he washed dishes. It's hard to say why he left Georgia and the promise of finally finding out who he really was. He tried to explain his feelings to Slater. I've been in this identity, Benjamin Kyle, for a long time, he told her. And even if they figure out who I am, I'm probably going to feel like Benjamin Kyle. So Kyle he was, though people kept trying to help him. A filmmaker set up a website for Kyle, but it was another dead end. The restaurant he worked at closed down and he lost purpose. He became more and more antisocial. It had been 10 years since his discovery, and depressing resignation was beginning to sink in. Then, out of the blue, he got a call. Genealogist C.C. Moore had found him. His name was actually William Brent Powell of Lafayette, Indiana. Writer Matt Wolf described his reaction. I'm so relieved, Kyle said. Then he was quiet for a while, and it sounded like he was crying. This news put Kyle slash Powell in contact with his brother Furman, who offered some details about his life and information about his parents and other family members. They'd been searching for him for years and assumed he had died. Then time came for him to reunite with his family and return to his childhood home. Everyone was in disbelief as he greeted old relatives and friends. At first, Powell was anxious about what they would say, but he was relieved upon hearing their memories. I said all along that I wasn't an axe murderer and so far I've heard nothing to contradict that, said Powell. He decided it was best for him to return home to Indiana to be with the family he'd left particularly his ailing brother. Settling into his old life, he continued to wrestle with the duality of his identity. Slowing in bits and pieces, he remembered more about his past. I'm worried about what the memories will be when they come back, he told writer Matt Wolf. I'm sure they won't all be good, he said nervously. Nevertheless, Powell continued on the long road of reconciling who he really was with the identity of Benjamin Kyle. It won't be easy, but it seemed better than not knowing at all.